Hey guys, this is 3F going in horizontal circles. So it says a police car of mass M moves with constant speed around a curve of radius R. The car is from your point of view coming out of the page and is in the process of turning towards the left side of the page. So if this is the car, it's coming this way towards you and going around like this. Here's the center over here and it's coming like that. So. Um, the car is moving as fast as it can without sliding out of control on a flat roadway to respond to an emergency. The maximum safe speed is V0. The coefficient of static friction between the car's tires and the roadway is mu sub s there. So very first thing, they want free body diagram. So let's go ahead and add some gravity as always. Label that FG. We'll of course have the normal force up. It's got to be equal in value because there's no acceleration in the y direction at all. So what about the next force? What's actually pushing it in a circle? Again, this, for the car, the center of the circle's over here. Or on our free body diagram, the center of the circle's over here, and it's turning like that. So our force has to point something, has to point towards the center of the circle. Anything going in a circle has a centripetal force towards the center. So what is it? It's the friction of the roadway there. So the force of friction, I'll label that. So next part up here is, it says, suppose the police car arrives at another section of the roadway that also curves, but has a radius of curvature greater than R. Actually, sorry, I'm going out of order here. That's not the next part. The next part is right here. Here it is. <clears throat> it says, suppose that the car encounters a wet section of the curved roadway so that the, this section of the curve has a coefficient of friction less than mu sub s. The maximum safe speed to make this turn is v sub 1. Mark the correct relationship between v0 and v1. And then explain your reasoning using physics, physical principles without manipulating equations. This means you may reference equations from the equation sheet, but should not derive an equation. Come on, guys. Why? Okay, fine. All right, so the one equation that you should probably mention is that you can bring up that the centripetal force is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration, which is mass times velocity squared over r. So you will want to reference that one. So the thing is, our centripetal force is caused by the force of friction. And if we have a, and the force of friction, by the way, is proportional to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Well, if we don't change our mass, that's constant. That will also mean our normal force doesn't change. So less coefficient of friction leads to less force of friction. Less force of friction mean, leads to less centripetal force. So if we have less centripetal force, we can't go as much in a circle as we normally would. So if we see here, less centripetal force means less velocity. The radius is fixed, so less centripetal force leads to less velocity. So V1's got to be less than V0. And I think you actually have an intuitive sense of that. If there was less friction on the roadway, you're not going to be able to turn in tight of a circle there. So then they say, get to this part, suppose that a police car arrives at another section of the roadway that also curves but has a radius of curvature greater than R. The maximum safe speed to make this turn is V sub 2. Mark the correct relationship between V sub 0 and V sub 2 here. So let's go back to what we mentioned before. All the things, the centripetal force is proportional to M or is equal to V squared over R. So if we look at this, the bigger the radius we have, the bigger this number is, the smaller this gets, the less centripetal force we need. So less centripetal force is needed when you have a bigger radius. If you go the other way, the bigger the radius, the less centripetal force we need. Not that we have, that we need. So that means that we can get a bigger and bigger velocity. So again, if I play it all out, let me actually write it this way. A bigger radius, we need less centripetal force. That allows us to have a greater velocity there. So V2 can be bigger than V0. A bigger radius 
another way to think about it is inertia. It's easier to turn a bigger radius there be because it's not fighting inertia as much. So next part then, they say derive an expression for the maximum safe speed the car can make in terms of mu sub zero and r. So here we're finally gonna get an equation. So remember this, always start off all your centripetal problems like this. We know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be a centripetal force because it's going in the circle. That is to say mass times centripetal acceleration, which is to say mv squared over r. So now, what are the forces in the x direction pointing towards or out of the circle? There's only one. The force of friction is the only force, so that must be equal to mv squared over r. So let's plug in for the force of friction. Since it's sitting on, or it's always, sorry, mu times normal force, and that will be mv squared over r. Now, it's sitting on a flat surface, so the normal force will be equal to the weight. So the coefficient times, sorry, mass times gravity will be equal to mass times velocity squared over r. There's a mass here and a mass here, so it, as in so many centripetal problems, it cancels out. So next line then, we got mu times g is equal to v squared over r. So what I'm gonna do is multiply my r up to the other side, and actually I'm gonna start calling it capital R now because that's what they do. So v is equal to r times mu times g, but that was actually v squared, so to make it v, we gotta take the square root of each side. And again, whoops, let's call it capital R because that's what they call it. So it looks kind of like rug there. So the velocity is equal to the square root of rug. So the last part here is they say explain how your expression in part C supports your answers for part BI. That one was basically talking about friction and velocity. So if we look here, the velocity is proportional to the square root of the coefficient. So if we have less coefficient, we're gonna have less velocity possible, which is what we said. And then likewise down here, it, the equation showed us that velocity is proportional to the square root of the radius. So a bigger radius, a bigger velocity possible. But this is an equation in case it comes up on a multiple choice that you should memorize. And again, this is a maximum velocity because at that point, this side of the equation will get too big if that velocity passes that and the friction will not be able to supply enough force in order to keep it going in a circle and it will slide out. So again, this is a maximum velocity.